The Crixal Empire had seen it all, planets stripped of their resources, civilizations crumbled under their mighty fleet, and resistance crushed before it could even form. Earth was supposed to be another checkmark on their long list of conquests. The Council had reviewed the data with casual disinterest. A small blue planet, teeming with primitive life forms, barely reaching type zero on the Kardashev scale. Their communications were laughable, simple electromagnetic waves that revealed their ignorance of higher technological powers. The Crixel commander, Zarnok, smiled as he leaned back in his chair, talons tapping against the control panel. Defenseless, he murmured, the word carrying a certain satisfaction. His second-in-command, Gorthan, stood by, scanning the final reports. Humans, they call themselves that. They still rely on fossil fuels for energy. Their most advanced weaponry is projectile-based, barely reaching their atmosphere. This is going to be over before it starts. Sarnak nodded. Prepare the invasion fleet. This will be quick and easy. In their arrogance, the Crixels saw Earth as a trivial task. They had crushed empires with fleets that spanned star systems. Humans, by comparison, were nothing more than ants to be swept aside. The decision to invade had been made without hesitation. Zarnak's fleet, the vanguard of the empire, was already en route. As the alien ships neared Earth, Zarnak reviewed the planet's statistics again. The human population was divided into various factions, constantly at odds with one another. Their military forces were laughable, primitive jets, outdated nuclear weapons, and ground forces that lacked the cohesion seen in the more advanced species the Crixel had faced. Their cities were poorly defended, spread across the globe without centralized protection. Zarnak's overconfidence grew with each passing moment. They don't even know we're coming, Borthen sneered. Of course not, Zarnak replied, amused. Why would they? They lack the technology to detect us until it's far too late. The Crixel Empire had conquered dozens of worlds just like Earth. The usual pattern followed, overwhelm the defenders with superior technology, subdue the populace, and strip the planet of its resources. Then, leave the survivors to rebuild under Crixel rule, broken and compliant. As their massive fleet approached Earth's atmosphere, cloaked from detection by the humans' rudimentary radar systems, Sarnak allowed himself a rare moment of reflection. Perhaps it was the sheer ease of this mission, or maybe it was the thought of yet another flawless conquest, but something about this invasion felt routine. Monotonous. There was no thrill anymore. Crushing one primitive species after another had become almost dull. Still, duty was duty. The ships entered Earth's atmosphere undetected. Their cloaking technology rendered them invisible to the primitive satellites orbiting the planet. No alarm had been raised. Zarnak had ordered a staggered attack, first, a disabling of human communication systems, then a swift invasion of key cities across the globe. Earth, from all appearances, was asleep as the invaders arrived. Cities twinkled in the night, unaware of the silent ships hovering above them. Zarnak tapped a few commands into his console. The first wave of their attack commenced, and the planet's communication networks blinked off in seconds. Satellites were destroyed before any warnings could be sent. Across Earth, people were left in confusion as their televisions, phones, and radios suddenly went dead. Pathetic, Gorthan muttered. They can't even defend their own skies. Proceed with the ground invasion. Zarnak ordered, confident that by sunrise, Earth would belong to the Crixel Empire. Troop carriers descended from the fleet, landing in unison near major human population centers. The operation was meticulously planned. Each squad of Crixel soldiers was equipped with energy weapons that could vaporize human tanks, and personal shields that rendered them nearly invulnerable to the crude ballistic projectiles Earth's forces would undoubtedly use. The first encounters were brief and predictable. Human military bases were decimated before their personnel could even understand what was happening. Fighter jets scrambled to intercept the invaders, but they were swatted out of the sky by Crixel drones before they could fire a single shot. Zarnak's fleet tore through Earth's feeble defenses with ease, just as expected. In the control room of his flagship, Zarnak watched the invasion unfold with a satisfied grin. 
The Crixal warriors stormed through human cities with little resistance. Soldiers scattered like ants before the might of their energy cannons. Civilians, terrified and confused, could do nothing but run. Just as I predicted, Tsarnak said, turning to Gorathan. By the end of this cycle, Earth will be ours. But there was something unsettling in the reports coming in. The resistance, while disorganized, was not entirely absent. In certain regions, human forces had managed to hold out longer than anticipated. It wasn't that their weapons were more effective than expected. It was something else, something the Crixel hadn't accounted for. Willpower. Humans were fighting back with an intensity and tenacity that was surprising, even to Zarnak. He dismissed the thought. It didn't matter. The outcome was inevitable. On the ground, human forces were doing everything they could to survive. They were grossly outmatched, but they fought with desperation. Makeshift defenses were thrown up, guerrilla tactics were employed, and even as entire cities fell to the Crixal advance, humans refused to surrender. Reports started coming in of individual human soldiers taking down Crixal troops through sheer audacity. A group of civilians had ambushed a Crixal patrol, using improvised explosives made from household chemicals. Small, seemingly insignificant acts of defiance, but they began to pile up. The Crixal had never encountered this kind of resistance before. In their previous conquests, species would either flee or surrender once they saw the overwhelming force of the Empire. But humans, humans were different. They didn't seem to know when to give up. Sarnak frowned as more reports trickled in. These isolated incidents were too minor to change the course of the invasion, but they were happening more frequently than he'd like. The humans were fighting back in ways the Crixel hadn't expected, taking advantage of their terrain, setting traps, and launching ambushes. Still, Zarnak wasn't worried. Not yet. Have the troops continue advancing, he said, more to himself than to Gorthin. This planet will fall, just like all the others. He believed it. He had to. The invasion began in earnest as Crixel ships descended over Earth's major cities. At first, there was no real resistance, just confusion and panic. Power grids flickered out, communications went silent, and the usual hum of human life ground to a halt. From the perspective of the Crixel soldiers, it was all routine. The invasion was unfolding as planned. Initial ground forces spread through urban areas encountering little resistance as the alien soldiers marched forward, their advanced armor glinting in the faint light of human street lamps. It wasn't long before human military forces scrambled to react. Without communication, the response was delayed, fragmented. Sarnak's troops faced small, scattered units of human soldiers who fought bravely but lacked coordination. The Crixel weapons tore through their lines with ease, and the initial skirmishes seemed like little more than a formality a brief reminder of what the Empire had done a thousand times before. But as the hours passed, something strange started to happen. The humans weren't retreating as expected. In fact, their resistance was growing stronger, more organized, and more aggressive. Crixel forces encountered fierce pockets of human fighters, who were no longer running from the invaders but actively engaging them. These human soldiers, outgunned and technologically inferior, used tactics the Crixel hadn't seen before, hit-and-run attacks, ambushes in urban environments, and a stubborn refusal to surrender. The more Zarnak's troops pushed forward, the harder the humans fought back. On the ground, Crixel soldiers found themselves in unfamiliar territory. While their technology allowed them to dominate in open combat, the humans' terrain became a weapon against them. Cities became mazes of narrow streets and hidden alleys where small groups of human fighters launched surprise attacks, disappearing into the darkness before the Crixel could retaliate. The once overconfident invaders found themselves constantly on edge, unable to predict where the next attack would come from. The energy shields they wore, once thought impenetrable, were tested by creative human assaults, Molotov cocktails, explosives made from everyday materials, and sniper attacks from concealed positions reports began to flood in from across the globe. Human forces were holding out longer than anticipated in several major cities. In some areas, the Crixel advance had stalled entirely. This wasn't because the humans had better weapons, they didn't. But their tactics were unpredictable, 
their determination relentless. Crixel commanders found themselves frustrated by an enemy that refused to play by the same rules as other conquered species. Humans weren't relying on brute force. They were using their ingenuity, their intimate knowledge of their environment, and their willingness to take risks that no other species would dare. Zarnak watched from his command center, irritation slowly creeping in. He had expected resistance, but not like this. The human stubbornness was beginning to become a problem. In previous conquests, once a planet's main defense forces were crushed, the population either surrendered or fled. But here, every attempt to crush the human spirit only seemed to embolden them. His fleet's superior firepower was cutting through cities, but it wasn't enough to stamp out the flickers of resistance. In one particularly unexpected moment, a group of human civilians managed to take down a Crixel supply ship. They had used improvised explosives, attacking the ship as it was landing with reinforcements. It was a minor setback in terms of resources, but a major psychological blow. The fact that these, defenseless, humans could even land a hit on a Crixel ship sent ripples of frustration through the ranks. What should have been a flawless victory was turning into a series of small, annoying defeats. The human resistance wasn't just military either. Civilians were getting involved in the fight. Zarnak received reports of entire neighborhoods banding together to create makeshift defenses, of humans sabotaging Crixel supply lines, and even using their own infrastructure to slow down the invaders. Roads were blocked, buildings were collapsed intentionally to trap Crixel units, and civilians armed themselves with whatever they could find. The longer the battle dragged on, the more the Crixel realized they were not just fighting an army, they were fighting an entire planet, united in their defiance. Despite the mounting setbacks, Zarnok refused to adjust his plan. He believed in the overwhelming superiority of the Crixel Empire. No species had ever truly defeated them, and humans, with all their primitive technology and reckless bravery, wouldn't be the first. He ordered his commanders to press the attack harder, to overwhelm the human forces with sheer numbers and firepower. But pressing harder didn't break the humans, it only made them fight back more fiercely. Crixel forces began to experience fatigue, something they weren't accustomed to. They were used to quick, decisive victories, but the humans were drawing them into a prolonged conflict. Ambushes, guerrilla tactics, and unexpected counterattacks began to wear on the invading forces. In the jungles, deserts, and frozen tundras, human fighters were proving that they could not only survive but thrive in conditions the Crixel found harsh and unfamiliar. There were moments of desperation on both sides, but the humans had an advantage the Crixel couldn't understand, resilience. They fought not just for survival but for the future of their species. For every city that fell, a new resistance movement would spring up in another, harder to locate and even harder to extinguish. And the more ground the Crixel took, the more they realized how vast and unyielding Earth was. This planet wasn't going to roll over and surrender like so many others had. Zarnok's frustration grew into something darker, doubt. He wouldn't admit it, not yet, but the resistance was wearing down his forces. The invasion, which had been expected to take mere days, was stretching into weeks. Every delay, every setback, chipped away at the Crixel's morale, while the humans only seemed to grow stronger, more united. The Crixel soldiers, once proud and confident in their advanced weaponry, now found themselves second-guessing every move. Their technology was superior, but it couldn't anticipate the sheer unpredictability of human tactics. A routine patrol could turn into a deadly ambush at any moment. Every building, every shadow could hide a potential threat. The humans had learned how to fight back with what little they had, and they were doing it with devastating effectiveness. By the time Zarnok realized the full extent of the resistance, it was too late to stop it. Earth was no longer just another conquest. It had become a battleground where the Crixel were no longer the clear victors. For every victory they claimed, there was a new human uprising to contend with, a new form of defiance that they hadn't expected. And for the first time, the Crixel Empire was beginning to understand that taking Earth wouldn't be as easy as they had thought. The human resistance, once thought to be scattered and weak, began to grow into something far more formidable than the Crixel had anticipated. After the initial chaos, 
human leaders around the globe started organizing. It wasn't long before alliances were formed between governments and even rebel groups that had once been at odds. There was no choice but to unite. The invasion had transcended borders, ideologies, and long-standing conflicts. Now, it was a war for survival. The first major shift came when the humans discovered how to repurpose the Crixel technology. A group of engineers and scientists, working in a makeshift lab after one of the Crixel ships had been downed, managed to reverse engineer their energy shields. Though they couldn't replicate the exact technology, they found ways to disrupt it. This was a game changer. Suddenly, human forces had a countermeasure to the Crixel's once impenetrable defense systems. On the battlefield, this new knowledge gave human soldiers the edge they needed. Using captured Crixel tech, they were able to create EMP-like devices that disrupted the alien shields long enough to allow for effective strikes. Now, when a Crixel patrol entered a city or town, they were no longer invincible. Their shields would flicker and fail, leaving them exposed to human firepower. For the first time since the invasion began, human forces were scoring real victories. The Crixel, who had relied on their overwhelming technological superiority, were caught off guard. Their strategies, designed to steamroll over weaker planets, weren't working. The humans were adapting faster than any species they had encountered. The Crixel had been prepared to face armies, but they weren't prepared for an entire population turning into soldiers. Civilians, guerrilla fighters, and military personnel all became part of a unified front. Cities that had once been soft targets turned into fortresses, with every street, building, and sewer becoming part of the defense. One of the most striking examples of humanity's ingenuity came during the Battle of Los Angeles. The Crixel had launched a major offensive, expecting to crush the city within hours. They landed troops, set up blockades, and began their push. But what they encountered wasn't a simple, disorganized defense. The humans had booby-trapped entire districts. Roads had been mined, buildings rigged to collapse, and supply lines were ambushed at every turn. The Crixel's advanced walkers, towering mechanical beasts armed with heavy plasma cannons, were rendered useless as human forces led them into narrow alleys, where their size became a disadvantage. These towering machines, designed to inspire terror, became sitting targets. It wasn't just in Los Angeles. Across the globe, humans were using their knowledge of the terrain to turn the tide. In the forests, human fighters used the thick underbrush and trees to their advantage, launching surprise attacks and then disappearing before the Crixel could retaliate. In the mountains, snipers set up positions in places the Crixel couldn't easily reach, taking out alien officers and crippling their command structure. Even in the seas, human submarines and stealth boats harassed the Crixel ships, employing tactics the invaders couldn't have predicted. As the humans rallied, so did their morale. What had once been a war of desperation was turning into something else, an outright defiance against an empire that had underestimated them. Every small victory, every Crixel unit destroyed sent a message, Earth wasn't going to fall without a fight. The Crixel began to feel the strain. Their forces, once spread thin across multiple planets, were now concentrating more heavily on Earth. But even that wasn't enough. The humans had turned what should have been a brief conquest into a drawn-out war. For the first time in Crixel history, the Empire was fighting a battle of attrition. Their ships were still superior, their weapons unmatched, but every day, the humans were learning more, adapting faster, and hitting harder. Zarnok, frustrated by the slow progress, ordered more aggressive tactics. Civilians were targeted in an attempt to break human morale, but it backfired. Instead of surrendering, humans grew angrier, more united. The Crixel's brutality only solidified the resolve of their enemies. Mass evacuations had already moved much of the civilian population to underground bunkers and hidden facilities, where they could continue to support the war effort by supplying intelligence, building weapons, and training fighters. The Crixel Empire had never encountered such a situation. They were used to dominating through fear, through overwhelming force. But Earth was different. The humans didn't break. Instead, they adapted. They found ways to disrupt the Crixel's communication channels, jamming their signals and feeding them misinformation. 
Entire Crixel battalions were led into traps because of faulty intelligence, caught in crossfire, and obliterated. One of the most significant blows to the Crixel came when human hackers managed to infiltrate the alien command systems. Using captured technology, they broke into the Crixel's encrypted communications, learning the invaders' battle plans. For weeks, the humans had been one step ahead, ambushing Crixel units before they could launch their attacks. By the time Zarnok realized his plans had been compromised, the humans had already dealt devastating blows to his forces. As the tide of the war shifted, something else changed, humanity's perception of itself. This wasn't just a fight for survival anymore. It was a fight for the future. For centuries, humans had been divided. By politics, by borders, by history. But now, in the face of a common enemy, they stood together. Soldiers from different nations fought side by side, sharing tactics, weapons, and victories. Civilians who had never held a gun before became warriors, fighting for their homes, their families, and their planet. In the Crixel Empire's long history of conquest, they had never faced anything like this. Every attempt to outflank, outthink, or overwhelm the humans was met with a new counterattack, a new form of resistance. The invaders had thought they were dealing with a primitive species, but they were learning, too late, that humanity's greatest strength wasn't in its weapons or technology. It was in its ability to adapt, to survive, and to fight back with everything they had. By the time the Crixel leadership realized the full scale of their mistake, it was already too late. Earth had become a quagmire, a battlefield that the Crixel couldn't easily escape from. For every inch they gained, they lost a mile elsewhere. The human forces, now battle-hardened and unified, were proving to be a far greater enemy than the Crixel could have ever predicted. And Zarnak, watching from his command center, began to understand that this war was no longer about taking Earth. It was about survival, his own. The final battle was inevitable. Both sides knew it was coming. The Crixel had thrown everything they had at Earth, and still, the humans stood strong. Zarnak, once confident in his empire's superiority, now felt the weight of his miscalculations pressing down on him. His forces were stretched thin, supply lines were fractured, and morale was plummeting. Meanwhile, the humans, who had once seemed disorganized and primitive, were now operating as a unified force, their resistance growing stronger with every passing day. Zarnok knew that if the humans weren't crushed soon, the Crixel Empire itself would be in jeopardy. Word of the humans' resilience was spreading throughout the Empire's territories, and for the first time in centuries, the Crixel were facing whispers of rebellion among their other conquered worlds. If Earth wasn't subdued, it could ignite uprisings that would shake the very foundation of the Empire. The decision was made, an all-out assault, one final push to break the humans and take control of the planet once and for all. Zarnak deployed every available ship, every soldier, and every weapon. The Crixel fleet, battered but still formidable, descended on Earth's largest remaining human stronghold, an underground base located deep in the Rocky Mountains. This would be the site of the last stand. If the humans fell here, the Crixel could sweep through the rest of the planet unchallenged. But if they held, it would be the beginning of the end for Zarnak's invasion. The humans knew what was coming. They had intercepted the Crixel's communications, and they had prepared. The underground base had been fortified for months, turned into a labyrinth of defenses, traps, and weaponry. Every able-bodied person had been mobilized. Soldiers, engineers, scientists, civilians, all ready to fight for their survival. They had no illusions about the odds. The Crixel still possessed superior firepower, but this time, humanity had something else on its side, experience. They had fought these invaders for long enough to know their weaknesses, their tactics, and their limits. And they were ready. In the Crixel Empire's long history of conquest, they had never faced anything like this. Every attempt to outflank, outthink, or overwhelm the humans was met with a new counterattack, a new form of resistance. The invaders had thought they were dealing with a primitive species, but they were learning, too late, that humanity's greatest strength wasn't in its weapons or technology. It was in its ability to adapt, to survive, and to fight back with everything they had. By the time the Crixel leadership realized the full scale of their mistake, 
it was already too late. Earth had become a quagmire, a battlefield that the Crixel couldn't easily escape from. For every inch they gained, they lost a mile elsewhere. The human forces, now battle-hardened and unified, were proving to be a far greater enemy than the Crixel could have ever predicted. And Zarnak, watching from his command center, began to understand that this war was no longer about taking Earth. It was about survival, his own. The final battle was inevitable. Both sides knew it was coming. The Crixel had thrown everything they had at Earth, and still, the humans stood strong. Zarnak, once confident in his empire's superiority, now felt the weight of his miscalculations pressing down on him. His forces were stretched thin, supply lines were fractured, and morale was plummeting. Meanwhile, the humans, who had once seemed disorganized and primitive, were now operating as a unified force, their resistance growing stronger with every passing day. Zarnok knew that if the humans weren't crushed soon, the Crixel Empire itself would be in jeopardy. Word of the humans' resilience was spreading throughout the Empire's territories, and for the first time in centuries, the Crixel were facing whispers of rebellion among their other conquered worlds. If Earth wasn't subdued, it could ignite uprisings that would shake the very foundation of the Empire. The decision was made, an all-out assault, one final push to break the humans and take control of the planet once and for all. Zarnak deployed every available ship, every soldier, and every weapon. The Crixel fleet, battered but still formidable, descended on Earth's largest remaining human stronghold, an underground base located deep in the Rocky Mountains. This would be the site of the last stand. If the humans fell here, the Crixel could sweep through the rest of the planet unchallenged. But if they held, it would be the beginning of the end for Zarnak's invasion. The humans knew what was coming. They had intercepted the Crixel's communications, and they had prepared. The underground base had been fortified for months, turned into a labyrinth of defenses, traps, and weaponry. Every able-bodied person had been mobilized. Soldiers, engineers, scientists, civilians, all ready to fight for their survival. They had no illusions about the odds. The Crixel still possessed superior firepower, but this time, humanity had something else on its side, experience. They had fought these invaders for long enough to know their weaknesses, their tactics, and their limits. And they were ready. When the Crixel ships appeared in the skies, blocking out the sun with their sheer numbers, the human forces didn't panic. Instead, they moved with precision and purpose. Anti-aircraft defenses that had been hidden beneath the surface roared to life, firing at the descending fleet. The Crixel, expecting another easy victory, were met with a wall of firepower that knocked several ships so. But the humans had anticipated this. They had dug in deep, using the mountainous terrain to their advantage. The Crixel ground forces, accustomed to open battlefields and quick, decisive victories, found themselves bogged down in narrow ravines and rocky outcrops, where human snipers picked them off from hidden positions. The once-feared Crixel walkers, those towering machines of war, became liabilities in the rough terrain, their movements slowed, their massive size making them easy targets for human artillery. Inside the underground base, human command had been running simulations for weeks. They knew that they couldn't win through brute force alone. Their strategy was to outlast the Crixel, to draw them into a prolonged battle where their superior numbers and technology would mean less. The humans had stockpiled food, water, and ammunition for a siege. They had rigged entire sections of the base to collapse at the push of a button, turning corridors into death traps for any invading forces. And they had learned how to disrupt the Crixel's communication systems, sowing confusion among the alien ranks. The Crixel advance was slow and brutal. They threw wave after wave of soldiers and machines at the human defenses, but every step forward cost them dearly. The humans fought with a ferocity that the Crixel had never seen before. This wasn't just a battle for territory, it was a battle for existence. Every human fighter knew that if they lost here, Earth would fall. There was no retreat, no surrender, only victory or extinction. As the hours stretched into days, Zarnak's forces began to falter. The humans had drawn them into a war of attrition, and the Crixel were not built for it. Their troops were growing weary, their supplies dwindling, and their once unshakable morale was starting to crack. 
The humans, on the other hand, seemed to draw strength from every Crixel defeat, no matter how small. They were fighting not just for survival, but for something greater, their freedom, their planet, their future. Zarnak, watching the battle unfold from his flagship, felt the desperation creeping in. He had thrown everything at the humans, but they refused to break. His forces were being picked apart by an enemy that should have been easy to defeat. He had underestimated them at every turn, and now it was costing him the invasion, perhaps even the empire itself. In a final act of desperation, Zarnok ordered a direct assault on the underground base. His elite troops, the best the Crixel Empire had to offer, were sent in with orders to breach the human defenses and bring the battle to an end. But the humans were ready. They had been waiting for this moment, knowing that the Crixel would eventually try to take the fight to them directly. As the Crixel soldiers entered the base, they found themselves trapped in a maze of destruction. Explosives hidden in the walls detonated, collapsing tunnels and cutting off their escape routes. Human soldiers, using the tunnel's twists and turns to their advantage, ambushed the invaders at every corner. It was close-quarters combat, brutal and relentless, and the Crixel, despite their superior technology, were overwhelmed by the sheer determination and resourcefulness of the humans. In the end, it wasn't the humans' weapons or their technology that won the battle, it was their will. They fought with a resolve that the Crixel couldn't match. For every human that fell, another took their place, and they kept fighting, kept pushing, until the Crixel forces were broken. Zarnok, watching from above, saw his invasion crumble before his eyes. His elite troops were being annihilated, his ships were taking heavy damage from human defenses, and his once proud fleet was in disarray. He had lost. Earth had not only resisted the Crixel invasion, it had defeated it. In the aftermath, as the last of the Crixel ships retreated from Earth's atmosphere, humanity stood victorious. The cost had been high, and the scars of the war would take generations to heal, but they had done the impossible. They had faced down an empire that had never known defeat and emerged triumphant. For the first time in history, humanity was no longer confined to its own planet. They had proven that they could stand against the stars, that they could survive and even thrive in the face of overwhelming odds. And as the Crixel limped away, humanity knew that they were no longer just fighting for Earth. They were fighting for their place in the universe.